Nine o'clock. Okay, I'd like to call this meeting in order to a motion to approve the agenda. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Let's stand up to the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Definitely public comment, and then during our meeting, we allow comment on these topics. But if you have comment right now, we will open. Yeah, I apologize for leaving early. I have another appointment, but I would like to address the uh, uh, the county uh, board of supervisors regarding uh, drag show activities uh, in the area. Uh, it probably relates somewhat to the uh, agenda item in terms of renewing uh, licenses for uh, establishments that uh, uh, conduct uh, such activities. Uh, I'd like to uh, just uh, read a few comments that somebody wrote here. And says, many people believe it's just a fun game to have these drag shows, and it doesn't matter what other people do. However, it is an attack on God's design uh, for men and women and family life. It has an adverse effect on society. Uh, the primary goal is to uh, normalize or desensitize the public and people in regard to uh, family values and uh, the recognition of the men and women. So uh, I spoke to you uh, earlier before an event occurred at uh, 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 South Shenandoah, and I did uh, kind of stop by the uh, sheriff's office too. So I think uh, one of the concerns is that uh, I think there are certain ordinances that are, are uh, in regard to attendance of uh, activities that uh, have uh, this kind of a uh, venue and. Uh, we make and I encourage you to uh, make sure that, like the sheriff's department and so on, uh, monitor those to ensure that uh, there aren't uh, any minors uh, uh, allowed uh, to be in attendance of those events. If I understand it rightly, uh, that there should not be any 
not bartenders or waitresses or uh, any uh, help of the establishment as well as attendance of anyone you know under 21 years of age. And uh, that needs to be uh, monitored closely to ensure that that doesn't happen. Uh, so the main thing is that uh, this this type of activity is not good uh, for our society. Uh, and I guess that's the gist of my comments is to yeah, create awareness uh, of it happening and the effect it does have on our society. Unless you have any questions, then that's, thank you for your time. Thanks, sir. I'd like to say, Martin Mayor, I'd like to say a few words about this subject also. Uh, Ernie, myself, Jerry McDonald here, we're all members of the Knights of Columbus and Shenandoah, and uh, we're all members of the Grand Knights of the organization. So uh, we sort of represent that in what we're doing here. Uh, I want to say that marriage and family are the building blocks of this society. And if you <coughs> not to promote events, but continue to erode the value of the family. Drag is largely a non-heterosexual novelty that mocks womanhood and is scandalous to a healthy society. It is a perversion of our sexual identity. Now, they've had a performance there, apparently, and I suppose the next performance will be perhaps the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. You know, which is a perversion of sexual and religious identity. So the current activities are approved by issuing another liquor license. Then why not expect a strip tease show at that point? Maybe triple X films. Perhaps the sale of sex books at these events. But where does it stop? I presume the original purpose of this event was a Page County family entertainment site. Family seems to be lost when money is the prime objective. Mills County is caught off guard with a playhouse theater just south of Mills Bucks. Don't let Jacqueline become the Page County Playhouse Theater. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. I'm, I'm Jerry McDonald. I am underground energy. And I, I do a lot of business in Shango. And I was just thinking that, uh, you know, the Shango schools, they do a lot to promote their quality education. And Page County, they do what they can to make it. They could do it here from the county. So, uh, with all that, why ruin it when, uh, when you bring drag shows and who knows if they serve alcohol to underage kids. So I was thinking, why ruin all the good work that you've done with uh, people bringing in bad morals in the drag shows? And who knows what's next? So, that's all I have to say. Okay. <clears throat> Are you on? Uh, hand up. Oh, hand up. Let's see on here. Let's see. You can't see that. I can't see that. I can't see the hands up now. It's MK. Oh, oh, now they put it in. Okay. Is there anybody online that would have a comment? Morning, JD King, Page County Engineer. I uh, sent out the update about the same 30 last evening. Uh, <clears throat> different week. We are all involved with the five trucks today. I'm going to echo. Uh -huh. uh, 
plays are out working. And I did have a, a resignation of a blade operator this week. That what that means is we'll post that job because at the coin shed we'll post that job internally and someone may take it. We'll do uh, musical chairs until nobody uh, nobody signs up for an open job. Then we'll go outside. There will be some first. I anticipate some personnel moves inside the, the department for a few weeks. We we got done on the pavements. The spray factor was working on the J14 AA on the spalls on that concrete. We'll be uh, doing other maintenance work on that later in the month. The drive crew was working on <coughs> the center of the county on 220th Street west of Yorktown and on, on Kiwi. And then the uh, part of the crew is going to be on vacation next week, so that'll kind of that, those efforts will ramp down. We had a safety meeting yesterday morning. Uh, one of the topics was the heat stress, how to handle heat stress. We're coming up to the summer months. And uh, before patterns. And we, we did some, we finished up with some edge rubbing work on J64. And upon that for a while to get the blades back to their districts with the with the rain last week. And then we'll, we've got another segment of J52. I like to run the the edge rest through on. Boomore is out earlier in the week and then Tractor Die out there on the road. They've uh, they've diagnosed it to be an alternator, so that should be a uh, quick fix in the back. We'll probably bring it in and take the boomore off and put on a site mower so we can move more ground. Uh, we got a fuel load of diesel fuel in today and tomorrow we'll get 5,000 gallons of road oil and run on a great counter. We also sell that to other agencies in the area. The state gets some off of us, Taylor County, Fremont County, and even Nebraska City. So that helps us use up the oil faster and, and there is shelf life on this material. Moving to our bridge construction. That's what I'm saying. I have a couple of photographs there. One is the bridge deck on 280th, the other is uh, bridge deck forms on Essex. The crew up 280th is, is the next thing they're doing is forming the post, the rail posts on the edge. But they were slowed up yesterday because the, the headquarters called and they wanted to move the crane out. So they had to break down the crane that through a few hours of non work on the water. But that'll be the next concrete corridor for rail posts and then for the rail work on the ends. The Essex Bridge anticipated work on the deck or pouring the deck perhaps around the, the 4th of July before or after he wasn't certain. That's kind of a fall park time to do that bridge deck. Continue to work on the next bridge, which is T34, the bridge on M56 at 190th Street. Uh, coming up this month now that it's June, J. Road Lettings of the DOT. We're, we're, of course, interested in how that comes out with the numbers. Uh, the next week or next couple weeks, I'll have a funding agreement for that bridge, for the T 34 bridge in front of the board, and, and the 2023 budget amendment, the DOT side, and did the other side on Tuesday. And uh, I guess we missed missed an opportunity to to take the board down to the quarry. Do you have a, 
uh, perhaps next week or the following week. Um, are they crushing right now? They're crushing, they're crushing, they're still crushing asphalt. They're not and crushing road rock or us or Missouri yet. Yeah. Maybe so we should talk to them. When would be a good time to go do that? We could go. It'd be a, it'd be a, it'd be an extra meeting in the morning there. You know, we'll just meet down there and have a little meeting with them. We could take a morning and go down there if it works. Find day works in there. Do we need to consider that? Yeah. Questions for me on the update? Uh, oh, as, as an aside, I'm a patron of the Shenandoah Library and I could uh, urge your support for that. <laughs> <laughs> on the JD on the Rock, on the Shenandoah <clears throat> Park one, we talked about I'd like there to be that cleaner one inch type rock. Yeah. Yes. Shieldbergs gives a quote on they made us some. I'd like that. Be right. Good. And I'm, I'm gathering that paperwork. I've got so we can ask them what it be for them to make them for us and, and, and the local rock. Yeah. Rock. Just like to have a look at that and we can ask yeah. them about it and see what their price can be. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Next up is a library update. Hello, uh, my name is Andrew Hoffman. I'm the library director at the Lee Public Library, uh, and I'm here along with Gary from Shenandoah to kind of give you the guys an update from the Page County libraries. Um, that includes Clarinda Coin, Essex, and Shenandoah. We have a lot of things planned uh, coming this summer. We always try to have kind of awesome summer activities for families and children to do uh, during the summer breaks that many have. Um, so before we get into some of the programming we have, um, I wanted to say Coin isn't able to attend. Uh, they do have uh, lots of fun things planned, uh, but they are all volunteer led, so it is hard for them to get away and get to meetings like this. Um, but you, they are open a good number of days uh, each week. So if you are in point, I would recommend to stop by and check out their little library. Uh, the volunteers that run that actually do a pretty awesome job considering the resources and, and uh, services that they have. Uh, in Florinda, uh, with support from the Florinda Public Library Foundation, Page County Community Foundation, and the City of Florinda. We've nearly completed an update to the library landscaping. Um, if you've driven by um, in the last few weeks, you've probably seen things taken apart and then things put back in. Um, we were able to redo the landscaping to kind of freshen up the plants um, and the planters that are there, make it a little easier to maintain for us, hopefully in the long run as well. But we've also uh, included a bike repair station and a new bike rack out front, um, which is actually nice because now the bikes aren't left in the entryway. They actually do want bike rack. Um, so it makes getting to the, the library a little easier, but also what um, I'm kind of excited about uh, is uh, the area that's not finished yet, we're actually taking one of our existing handicap parking stalls and widening it to make it van accessible. So if anyone has a van ramp, we have a number of patrons that do, um, we only have one spot, but you would actually have to dump your wheelchair out into our book drop drop. So it wasn't always the safest. So this actually will give us one van accessible parking stall and then the other one by default could still be used, um, but this one will be a little safer. So we expect that to be complete weather permitting hopefully next week. Uh, and I really have to give a shout out to the Public Works Department because they're really the ones that are helping us achieve that with uh, a low cost option here. Um, what I wanted to give you guys from Florinda is a list of our June and July calendars here. Um, we have over 70 activities planned for June and July. Um, from all ages, uh, tiny tots all the way up to kind of family and community events. We have um, Jerry Barlow, our Celtic guitar player, coming. We have Devin Warner coming in July for our Saturday Upper Country Series. Uh, we were talking a little earlier prior to the meeting about some of our uh, glow forge or laser cutting classes. We have one on coasters coming up in June, which is just about full already. Um, but then we have some fun things like we're partnering with um, uh, Public Health and uh, Angels Home Health to give a diabetes program uh, in June as well. So I'll hand these out here in just a moment, but I'm also going to hand out um, a list of events and calendars for the Essex Public Library. Um, it's that time of year where people are taking vacation, so Sabrina was not able to make it, but um, they have pretty much, I mean, I'm impressed with everything that they're doing in little Essex too. Sabrina's got a lot of different kind of, each week is a different kind of theme. So they're doing music and crafts and movies and everything. So just about, uh, they're just as busy as we are in Corinna and Shenandoah. So uh, I appreciate your time. I'll pass these out and then I'll turn it over to Karen. Yeah. 
Well, I have to say thank you to Jade and King for getting out as a library pom pom center. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm kind of in songs, I converse, I'm very well from the Shenandoah Public Library, so Andrew's giving you his calendar, and I will have mine out here shortly, but today is a big kickoff for our summer reading program, and um, we are excited to offer that again this year, lots of different activities and events, uh, kids can earn badges, actually anybody can earn badges, you just, you don't have to be a kid to do it, so uh, some of the programs that are upcoming that I wanted to highlight is on Wednesday, June 21st, we're going to have a parade of wheels at Priest Park. So it's going to start up with a presentation on wheel safety given by the Shenandoah Police Department. And once that concludes, then everybody who's brought their wheels, whatever those might be from, you know, Christ of the Black Wagon, are going to parade around the park together. So it should be a lot of fun. Um, on Thursday, the 22nd of June, we're gonna hold a come and go workshop from 2.30 to 5.30 to the library. Um, it's called What's in a Hat, and everybody who's coming to that is going to get to make their own hats. I should have brought samples because Joy has some pretty cute um, top hats, ball hats, and stuff that you can make out of paper. So it, it'll be a fun craft project. And then the last thing I wanted to say was that the library is, again, offering this year uh, day passes to the Wilson Aquatic Center for, for kids. So. During the nine weeks that we're going to offer, we are giving out 24 day passes each week and um, come in on a first come first serve basis. They get to sign up and get a full pass that they can use any day that week that the pool is open. Um, so we will give out, like last year, 216 passes over the course of the summer to help uh, area youth 18 and under be able to attend the school. And it's been a great partnership for us with Shenandoah Rotary, who's helped fund that, and the Parks and Recreation Department and staff. So we're really excited to offer that again. Again, it's another way for, for us to, to help out the community. So any questions for any of us on some of the stuff that we're offering over the summer? Sounds fantastic, all of you. That's good. I was say, I didn't count all of mine last year. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I just stay home. I do have one more thing. Sorry, I didn't bring one for everybody. I know Jacob's got five. Mm -hmm. So I brought fidget spinner craft kits. So oh, if you are in the library each month, we have a new craft kit that we offer. This one is just um, a cardboard disc that you put a hole in and the yarn and make your own little fidget spinner. So it comes with a construction piece that like the instructions with the pictures. So each month we have a different craft kit and you can just stop in any time during the month, pick that up and do the craft set. We weren't quite as cool as the mods were a little more local. <laughs> <laughs> this year can be more productive. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, we're proud of our library as a base camp. Yes, they do a great job. Okay. What up there, Derek? Next up, we have. Um, Thank you. Yes, I think yes. I guess. On the agenda is the renewal of alcohol license for Jackie Blue okay. and DBA at Jack House. Okay. We would need a motion for that. Do you want to open it up for discussion? Or uh, do you want... There's no motion as far as. Uh, the one thing I would just I would just like to say, so I've, I've had lots of emails and phone calls and I struggle with their decision. Um, and thought about it in a great deal of, you know, what the, so, so to me, it comes down to morality and legality. And legally, um, they are a private business that has entitled or entitled to do what they want at their business as long as it falls under legal guidelines, not so much moral guidelines. Um, I, I, 
me say, saying that as a Christian, which I am, I struggle with that now, but also I believe that people have a right to choose what they're going to support. And I think if you look around the country right now, you see a lot of backlash on those businesses that have gone down this path and you're starting to see people that have the power to, you know, not patronize those businesses and it's, it's costing them. And so my thought is that, you know, the, the people, you know, the citizens of the county can make a choice whether they're going to support establishments like that. Um, if there's no money and there's no support for that, these businesses will not probably, you know, go after that type of uh, things. So the other thing is, you know, as long as they are doing 21 and over, which I do believe most of these are, um, and they're not selling liquor to minors, then I, to me, they're doing things legally. We don't really have a legal standing. I'm not sure about this, but a little bit I read to do all the entertainment, which is what this is. I'm not sure it's even a correct license. I don't know that. I, I wonder if we well, crossed out of alcohol into adult, adult entertainment. I'm well, sure. then that's that's the other thing. So they're just asking for a liquor license. They're not asking for a drag show license but or they're adult doing entertainment adult, license. But, but they are having adult entertainment. They've been doing it for the last several months. Well, I, I, I think it's just all entertainment stuff that's going on out there and perversions of that nature. And just bringing... I do know that they had one scheduled for May 20th that was canceled because they did not have enough people interested. So I I honestly believe, I think you will see people not, as, you know, frequent those establishments. They'll lose money on it. And, you know, as a private business, they're going to take the hit. Yeah. Um, as far as the, going into the perversions of adult entertainment, I don't think that's good for Page County. And oh, I agree. Well, I agree. Morally, I agree. I wholeheartedly well, agree. But I can't legally, it. I don't believe we have the power to push our morals onto private businesses that have a choice and citizens that have a choice. I don't think we have and the right to judge on that. It, I, they're only asking for a liquor license, and I think legally we can't deny that. Now, if they were asking for a drag show license right. or a hey, we're gonna have a strip club, right. I would definitely vote no. They're doing that. I, <laughs> they're doing that right now. So maybe we can make sure they have the correct license. Maybe. maybe look into that. The other the other right. question I had is I thought the state issued liquor licenses. No, we didn't. In the, the county, county okay. There's an appeal process. It does mention, and I tried to read through some that last night. If if the business we don't feel they have a moral standing, there is the word moral mentioned in there, uh, in the co in the code of what why we could refuse. I, you know what does that mean? I don't know. Does that mean they're stealing? Does that mean they're doing immoral acts against the family? I don't know. But I say wait, if nothing else, to make sure we do this right. I myself, I I'm going past into these strange perversions and these these shows and things. I don't want. Anything to do with that? No, I I agree. So I will on that note promote something in that way. So I don't have to understand it or no, I won't do it. But uh, they've crossed the line. I'm not going to support that in any way. And so that's right. right? So you guys can make a motion. So how long. how long do they have? How long does this renewal process uh, last? I mean, or do they do we have time here? Like it, huh? here it's here like Just twelve it's months. months. Okay, um, so. Paper, paper, yeah. When is it up? Like when do they run out of license? It says effective date June twenty fourth, expiration date a year from now. One year from June twenty fourth, so it must run out. I think it needs to be done. Oh, that's your insurance. Sorry, I'm reading the wrong thing. That's your insurance. Yeah. When does it say? And it is license information. Twenty fourth of June to twenty. Okay, so here's twenty fourth of June to twenty fourth of June. So the next twenty fourth of June. Yeah. I would move that we approve the liquor license, even though we maybe personally don't agree with what's going on there. I think we have a legal um, obligation to this business that's in Page County um, to approve the liquor license because that's all they're asking for is the liquor license. Yeah, I would, I would say, um, yeah, I mean, morally, ethically, I, I don't agree with that 
type of a second of her things. Okay. Uh -huh. Second of yes, I'll second, second that. Now. Yes. And, yeah. And so but you know, it comes with a I guess an asterisk by it that says, you know, you know, me personally don't choose to go there. Um so that's that's this you know a personal choice that I've made and my family has made. Um and I think other families can make that same choice. I trust the people in this county to make the right choice. Um, I do think those those places that you know pursue those kind of things just for the dollar, I think you know they'll they'll end up regretting those decisions. Oh, well, maybe I pray for those I people think you're because right. I think they're. Yeah. I don't know if there's a worse or something we can do. I I don't know, but you can prevent these yeah. kinds of. Well, I, I will tell you, I think the state house is does have legislation from the state level that they are trying to work on to ban these types of shows and things. I don't think any of it, anything yeah. of this nature in the county is better way we can make it not accessible. Well, yeah, I would love to just ban drag shows from the county. But well, all, all, all we can even do. Right. Well, yeah, not just saying money, but um, but you know that would I think that's an ordinance that we would have to pursue. Probably some somewhere down the line, but well, um, for the strict legal thing of asking for a liquor license, I don't think we can deny that. Well, I read the code when I thought it, it, it did mention businesses. You you can deny a liquor license if you don't think they're doing things right. If they can. don't have their insurance or other things, it also mentioned more. It did mention that. So I, on that note, I'm not going to go for it. But so, based just based on that, that being doing business there and people going there and. and have an alcohol liquor license, fine. They live across into what I don't believe is bringing the county down, and I and I just not going to support that. So anyway, with our discussion, but again, people now. don't have to go. They don't have to go, but it's Some it's people. also bringing in things. It's all kinds. Of I didn't even there. know they were. It's no, all kinds of things we could bring into yeah, the county that people don't have to go to to come after youth to their act and to to try and lure them in. So right, and I agree, and I think there's there's places in our county that. You know, you, you know, we talked about the libraries today. Good uh, the, the the libraries started doing some stuff, I would definitely pull funding. I would not be for that. Um, this is a private business that has put money into their business. They, um, and I don't agree with every business in Page County that has a business. I don't know that there. I mean, there's some things that I don't agree with, and I don't think I can control. Right. Well, you know, the, what they what they do. There is. Um, much about freedom and liberty as there can be, but the cross lines with pornography and things of that. I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. This is why I'm drawing from in there. These type of things are you have to have lines to protect certain levels. We don't all things are not you can't just do some things. You cross lines and we're out there. So anyway, then that I, I just can't support it. But let's we have a second and a motion. A second and then another discussion on it. We're we done. Do anything else say? Anything else say? Call for the question. question. What's that? I call for the question. Call for a vote. Yes. Well, let's have a vote. So, well, I guess might as well do a roll call. I guess because I'm gonna see how it goes anyway. So, can you just go down, Kristen, please. Aye. 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 No. Okay. That's done. So that done. Well, uh, next up on the ordinance is, uh, or on the order, on the agenda, is a summary. If you want to go over with Carl all over changes we kind of agreed on on the board. Good morning, Carl Summerson, Page County Attorney. Uh, Jacob and I had emailed briefly about this, and <laughs> my understanding is you folks have basically concluded all the meetings you've had. As far as discussions about what changes you want made to the existing wind ordinance. And so, what I suggest is having somebody prepare a summary of all those changes, preferably like a Word document, email that to me. I will then work up a, a draft of the proposed amendments. And it, my understanding is there's a number of different things being added in this. So, it's going to be fair. With that. And then what I would do is, once I've got that done, circulate it to everyone on board so you guys can check, make sure I've done what you want in there. And then we'll just need to get it on the agenda. 331 and 302 controls this process. 
Um, you can, if you publish beforehand, I think you can only have to vote twice or have to have meetings twice to review it and then vote. Uh, you can suspend two of the votes if everyone agrees to that and just read through it once. Uh, that's kind of the timeline on it. <coughs> Any questions about it? Well, so what, I mean, what do you want to do? Do you want to go over what we know right now? Tell him right now? What do you want to do? I, I think that's too cumbersome. I think we need so to write it down. To where everybody's involved. Um, we went through all this. We went through all of it. Melissa, Melissa, the auditor's office, has has it on in a Word document. So, there's so it's there. fairly simple to go in and make the changes. Well, um, has a document. And the road use and decommissioning, well, we might do that. We kind of made agreements on we want to be real money and all those things. Mm -hmm. Probably going to need, and you're going to need some kind of guideline. A lot of these, these things are written by lots of counties. So one one we pulled from, I don't know what we want to do there. I mean, we we get 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 guidelines. You can try to find. Well, for example, you're going to change setbacks, right? Yeah, that's pretty simple. That's I have to go in there and specifically repeal the portion of yeah, setbacks. Be right. And insert a new clause or step paragraph or whatever it is. The sets the new setbacks. Yeah. So that's going to be what this is. Is it's going to be that existing ordinance with all these little things shot into it, and then maybe it is, we have some things that aren't in there at all. You add them, add a Yeah, and that's but they, it's an entirely it's going to be all amended. But it's it's not like we're repealing the whole thing and doing it. Right. Do do it. Just, so you're just amending those space. parts. Yeah, you're just okay. trying to fix it. It's going to be. It's not going to look the same at all. But it's going to be. That's why my second question it. is. Having one of you or Melissa provide me with a list of what changes you want. Specific. Well, maybe have one we'll have person that to you and all of us again, see if we refresh our memory and all that. Yeah, it better. And then, and that way, we want to we want a point person to work on this, or do you want to come in here? What do you want to do? Because uh, we I think you've written it down. Well, we've yeah. got. Uh, I mean, if, I would just like to have that. Like, if you said Melissa has a word document, just yeah. have that to. You know, yeah. let's just review that publicly make sure we didn't miss and make sure we didn't miss anything. And then I think I would I would much rather not maybe not have a point person. I think we could all work on this together. Well, but then maybe we just have Carl come in here and do it because you get this going. I know we're gonna make a rough draft, but there's a lot of things that we might have to make ten rough drafts, but I'm careful. I'm trying to keep them not happening. Well, I think we need to make the list and give it to yeah. Carl. Well, and I can yeah, so having him in here because he's doing other things. Right. So and we can um, just clarify our list before yeah. it comes to you. Right. Okay. Yeah. So one my understanding is you guys have all agreed upon these yeah. changes. Right. right. Yeah. I just need to know what those changes are. So I okay. can put them in a rough draft of the amended ordinance. Get that rough draft out to you guys so you can verify that I've correctly I done what you well, I guess if you get to looking at these directions, you don't know, you need to ask a question. I guess sure. say what I these email. email all of us or whatever somehow, whatever right way you have this. Well to send so, maybe yeah. so so I would make it so that we bring the bring that word document next next meeting. We'll go over it yeah. and we're gonna we need need to review it and then send it to Carl after we agree that everything's documented right on that before we send it to him because I just yeah. want to make sure we didn't lift lift or forget anything. Yeah. And then he can, well, we he can start his process, and then if he has she questions, can send it to us. I mean, we, 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 she can send it to us, and we can thumbs up, and it looks good. You know, he can just have it, you know. Okay, email. And instead of bringing it to the meeting. I think we just need to each make our make the changes, make the notes. Okay. And then put them together, make sure we're all on the same page. So I understand what you guys broke yeah. up into different subject matter and different meetings rather than doing all clear. the meeting. Okay. So on one meeting we discuss setbacks. So just, just, you know, just send it. Just, I would maybe, think so, so that we can. If we think something, yes, yeah, speed up the process. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Just speed it up. Just, no. just email them and then speed up the process. And if we see something missed, we can shoot emails and say we missed this. Uh -huh. Make sure that's right. Okay. Jane, there's someone in. Yeah, this is kind of picky, but I've looked at a lot of ordinances, and I don't. I think the format, just the way it's put together. Could be slightly more professional looking. So I would I would maybe bring in a format that I think looks better. It's easier to be, it's more. Well, when you put this together, you're going to want this to have cohesion from one end to the other. That's the whole point. Once you get all so, yeah, you're opening the opening wiring ordinance and all that. And then 
and all these little points in there. A lot of those things that we did, or some of them, are not in it at all. So they're going to have to be totally added as a section. They're not even in there. Or in addition to a section. So that we agreed on. So you got to have something to start with. you got to go somewhere. So I say get this list. Let us all see it too to make sure we didn't miss something and just start. And as you have questions, come in here and ask, I guess, or whatever. If you have a question, email all of us. I just probably think it's more tight with this. Just email. Just email, email and then we'll get this thing going because we've got to get a rough draft and get the final draft. Yep. So, but if she had, because we had several things go down there, if she's compiled all of them, maybe send them out and we'll go from there this week. So, if we could, they want to put that email in to ask for that or that be done. Yeah, and you can take a note of that. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll we'll send, send that word document out. The car all ends to all of us. To all three of us. Yeah. We'll start working on that this next week to get something going. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Any other questions? No, we can do that. Thank you. Thanks, Carl. Thank you. Okay. Next up on the agenda is board communication. I had an RPA meeting yesterday on via Zoom. And uh, it was interesting. And um, then last Tuesday, I had a 911 meeting and an EMA meeting. So that was good. We went over quite a few things. So ended up being almost two hours. <laughs> It's supposed to be half hour, but we got into some good debate about the storm spotting stuff. So we'll just get into the way. storm spotting oh. and regular, you know, just how the county needs to act as far as sirens and things like that. So there was some good discussion on that. Other than that, I don't think I have anything else coming up. I haven't been to any meetings. I know, like every other month. I did have a question. So, and this, I wish Melissa was here, but she's not. Um, yeah, maybe it's not. When, when we do the minutes, and we, last week we voted for the changes to be happened, those, the minutes that we voted to change are still posted on our webpage um, as of this morning. Um, the, other, the other thing I question is, should we be posting minutes that we have not voted on yet as a board on our public web page if they have not been voted on? Mm -hmm. To me, we shouldn't post that to the public until we have been voted, until they've been approved by the board. I looked back, I kind of looked at all that, and we looked back, I think not before January, I don't think that all ever happened, but I could tell they were approved before they were posted for this the past January. So, okay. no, I don't. No, that's a good practice, and I don't know. And then I wasn't sure about it. So I know, like, May 18th is missing. It's not on there. But May 4th and 11th, or, and the 25th, before we even voted on that, which we were going to vote today. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I question why. The, is there a handbook with this, or a technology policy that we can draw? What is the. I don't, so I don't know how we vote. I don't know how. That's why I'm asking. How's that process? So when we vote on something like we did last week, yeah, it's being ignored. Then, to me, those minutes should have been replaced. Yeah, and the new ones posted at after, we, after we voted, but that did not happen. So I'm not sure um, why that didn't happen. Um, that's well, we that's just why I bring it up. I just find out the policies because there has to be policy made, and we should. Figure it out. This is this is. Which call is still in there? Will the board not be having calls? You see, and uh, you know, otherwise there's no reason to vote on them. It's if we're not going to be able to. Well, no, because they're going against the board. They're going against motions. They're right. going against. We're going to do things right, and if they continue to not follow the will of the board and. and there will be probably be this probably eventually will come ahead sometime and we'll see if it's right. So any other road community or board communication. Well now we're to the minutes. And now here we go again on the minutes. Uh the minutes this week again include 
discussion whether or not we vote is not happy to make minutes going on code. You know, the discussion. So, or not all discussions, part of the discussion on some topics. Yeah. It's great there was no discussion, but there was lots of discussion. And that, you know, even the side that's thinking that is right, it's not there. Uh, so, anyway, so on the minutes, I took again and got them right here. I mentioned them, and also, and from last week's minutes, something that isn't code, it's very, very, very clear is the the motions, the exact wording of motions and resolutions is supposed to be right. And I know it's hard to do, so it's okay. But I, but on the, we have said, I gotta be better at repeating myself and all of us. But on the, um, like the motion on the minutes last week, uh, made a motion to amend the minutes from meeting on the last was here. Amend the 4th, 11th, 18th, as presented, providing to meet all requirements in Fort Myers Code. That was the motion. And that's not it. So that does matter. That is something we have to have right. So I just, easy to miss. So I put it there. It's, I wrote that out. I passed these out here. I did the same thing. Just keep on the same scale we've been doing. I don't know if this is. Uh, the same scale of discussion. Uh, not be in the minutes, just the votes and the motions and all that stuff. Okay. Robert's rules and Robert's code sets were so anyway. Did you get one look that over? All I did was just take the minutes there and and just uh scratched out the discussion and, and that no action was taken on certain topics and then added the exact the thing that does matter that is against the code. We don't get our wording right. That is more damn back and watch the video of the motion. On the minutes last week. So that is what I would, I would like to make a motion. Here's my motion for this week, and I'll go slow. Um, and be patient here. I know it's hard to do. Tell me when you're ready. You ready? I'd like to make a motion to amend minutes from meeting on May 25th. Second. Second. With corrections presented. Providing they meet all requirements. They meet all requirements. Set forth in Iowa. That's my motion I'd like to make. Okay. I second on that motion. Second that. Okay, we've all got that. Any other discussion on that? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. So, uh, I Aye. 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 Okay, we got that all reported correctly. Now, the next step, if we're done, is to adjourn. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, why don't you go ahead? That's good. We're sitting here. Go ahead and do that. Before we adjourn. That's, sorry, I forgot about that. Just a short little a few thoughts. Uh, the FEMSA meeting yesterday in the morning was very interesting. Uh, I didn't get to the very beginning of it. I stayed for the rest of the day. Uh, they were very convenient, very open. They listened and they had good responses. Uh, among the things that were discussed, they talked about pipeline quality because there's going to be impurities. What will the impurities do to the integrity of the pipeline? They all acknowledge that moisture will deteriorate. Now, there's some talk about, well, maybe they need to have a nickel line of the pipeline. And there was nothing determined, of course. But nevertheless, it was acknowledged that there is deterioration, and deterioration of the pipeline is a cause for concern with the CO2. Uh, they even uh, they even got down to the point where you know they run the pigs they call them pigs they run through the lines to check the lines and it was uh, noted that uh, apparently semi frequently the batteries in the pigs uh, don't work and they, they even asked that if you required to have fresh batteries every time they run a pig through the line so I mean they were getting down to the nitty gritty of a lot of different things. Um, there was a lot of talk about siting the pipeline, of course, which is one of the things that I've talked to you about. Um, they had a Native American there from South Dakota, and I didn't, 
he, I, I don't know their structure, but he was in charge of their, uh, you know, not the board of supervisors, but anyway, in charge of their pipeline and their infrastructure. And he was telling them about how they had many problems until the Indian tribal council literally took hold of the situation and said, well, we're going to make the rules. We're going to determine where you're going to put this plant and how deep it's going to be and everything about it. And he said, you know, you can look at a hill, he was out in the back. So he said, you can look at a hill out here and you can see it. And then, you know, so many days later, and you have a little avalanche or something in part of the hill. So his advice to us, and he said, once we intervene and we determine the siting, the depth, the requirements, he said, we haven't had any problems. But prior to that, we had a number of uh, releases from different pipelines. Well, it wasn't CO2, but it was oil pipelines and gas pipelines. His advice to us is you local people need to be siting the pipeline because you know the situation, <laughs> you know the people, you know the location. He was very, very adamant about that. Um, that brings up the issue of, of course, siting. As many people said, we're getting the run around. Some of Carbon and the other uh, pipelines say, well, FEMSA determines the siting. FEMSA said, they don't determine the siting. The Carbon pipelines say, you folks can't do that. You can't set rules. And the utility board says they don't do that. So who sets the site? Who determines it? That should be a local. So one of the big issues that was put back into the FEMSA uh, face or, or written to their agenda was give us direction. Does the state have authority to decide? Do the local authorities have the ability to do, determine the site? Who determines the site? Because it's an elusive past situation. That was one of the major events, major things that I thought that came out of that yesterday. Um, they also talked about EMS, the fact that our EMS people are underfunded and ill prepared to um, work with uh, that, a disaster of this type. What was that? He's on the EMS. Um, and like what well, I'm located up there, you know, if um, there was a release in that area, the EMS apparently allowed to go out, get up the perimeter, and wait for the hazmat people to go out of Omaha. After they've been mobilized, it was to take them about an hour to get there. Anybody inside that uh, perimeter is not going to be in good shape by that time. Obviously, they'll be dead. So there's also the issue of who pays for it. Who pays for all that? Is the pipeline company going to pay for it? Or the county's going to pay for it? So that was the issue that brought up and pushed in. Obviously, there's no answer to it from yesterday's, but it was brought up, and, and uh, again, the people seem very attentive to that whole situation. Um, let's see, there was something else that I had in mind, just slipped my mind there a second ago about. Um, anyway. They also talked about pipeline safety. The number of incidents of releases with pipelines is lower than it is with truck or rail transportation. However, the magnitude of a release from a pipeline is much greater than any truck or train accident. Consequently, there's more lives lost with pipeline releases than there are with other forms of transportation. It was also noted that since this is this situation with Summit is such a wonderful savior of ethanol, where Shelby County sits, there's five or six ethanol plants within 60 miles. None of them are coming into this. Now, if this is the savior of ethanol, what is the reason they're not interested? The short answer is they found a way to use their CO2. They use it for, for a variety of things. So it's it's interesting the way this is set up 
the need is questioned to accomplish the end goal of their green energy mission. There's a variety of ways to go So, um, anyway, that, that's just a quick, uh, quick overview of, oh yeah, they had the, uh, I, I told you about the Sartation, Mississippi issue, where they had a pipeline made. They had an individual who was physically damaged, breathing issues still persist three years later, some cognitive issues. They had the uh, EMS individual who rescued that person was there. Uh, they had uh, the county uh, supervisor from that county, he was there. And you've never seen people so adamant as those individuals were. The EMS individual who rushed in and rescued that one individual, uh, there were two actually in the vehicle. He says, we thought they were dead. Um, he was literally, he said, I'd be jumping up and down if this was going anywhere near the residence or on my property. Because he says, we, in this city, we don't even know where some of the CO2 pipelines are. We've been finding out by accident, unfortunately, where they're at. So it was interesting, his, the EMS person, it was interesting, his take on the whole situation and how adamant he was about the dangers of that. So there was a lot more stuff I can't remember, but they had some very good panels and uh, talked about a lot of various things and ruling, rules and intricacies, et cetera. But uh, anyway, that was short enough to set for how long I can figure out the time. Um, Thanks for going. Yeah, right. Right. We all here. Yeah. Happy. Okay. All right. Okay. All good. We can adjourn. Good. Any motion to adjourn? Make a motion. I'll adjourn.